Well, the Federal Reserve is moving closer to raising interest rates this month, and the Fed chair said today he supports a traditional quarter point increase, but he also said he's opened an even bigger hike to help fight inflation. He expects inflation will peak before it goes down this year. A rate hike would be the first since 2018. We phased out our net asset purchases with inflation well above 2% and a strong labor market. We expect it will be appropriate to raise the target range for the federal funds rate at our meeting later this month. Powell's announcement is not surprising. In January, he said he expected an interest rate hike to occur this spring. As for the crisis between Russia and Ukraine, Powell says the impact is not yet clear. Since the Russian invasion started, oil futures shot up more than $100 per barrel. Locally, experts predict the Russia-Ukraine crisis could present more uncertainties. 3 News Now reporter Isabella Basco joins us live in the studio to show us how COVID-19, the supply chain crisis, and the invasion abroad makes way for complications. Vanessa, Russia and Ukraine both play major roles when it comes to our biggest commodities like grain and gas. Now we break down how a disrupted supply chain could lead to what an economist calls stagflation. So stagflation is a combination of rising price and economic contraction. And so COVID-19 so put us in a possible route towards stagflation. Stagflation is notoriously difficult to get out of, according to UNO Associate Economics Professor Dr. Zigong Feng. So we have high inflation. We have supply chain uh, disruption. And uh, so we are already in the um, possible route goes for a stagflation. So that actually that explains why Fed is very eager to raise the interest rate. But the Russia-Ukraine crisis adds more complications. Before the Russian and the Ukraine crisis kicks in, Fed is already in a difficult position. So to raise the interest rate too fast or too low. If they don't raise the interest rate, then so we are in a bad situation when the next recession comes. If we just leave, if we, if we raise the interest rate too high and then so we may just push the uh, economy in a very immature recession. Russia and Ukraine account for one third of world grain exports. Globally, Russia also provides 70% of gas and is the third largest oil producer, putting more strain on the supply chain. The Fed decided to take a middle ground so they don't want to push the interest rate too high. So that's going to exacerbate the potential damage from uh, Ukraine and Russian crisis to our economy. But they also want to have a proactive step. So to show the market or to give them some wiggle room eventually. So if we are really in a recession. The Federal Reserve increased the prime rate by 0.25. The market was expecting a 0.5% increase in the uh, prime rate. And the market was very negative to a 0.25 increase. And mortgage bonds are suffering from uh, the Fed not doing enough. The, the market wanted the Fed to do more to slow inflation down, and they didn't feel the Fed did enough today. Loan officer Terry Williams expects the housing market will continue to appreciate since there's a huge deficit in housing inventory. Between 1950 and 2009, every 10 years, they built 20 million houses. Between 2009 to 2019, they only built 6 million houses. So we have a huge deficit in new construction. Both Williams and Feng advise adapting to our new circumstances is key. With the restrictions easing, the economy seems to be on fire right now. And inflation isn't changing in the near term. So get in the market and own a house today. Uh, that same house could, again, cost you 10, 15, 20 percent more one year, two years from now. So this is not only good for us to come back with inflation, it's also good for us to move our economy and our world to a better and renewable world. Dr. Fang has presented research to the St. Louis, Atlanta and Kansas City Fed Research Department.